Okay, guys. Let's get started. Happy Monday morning. Uh, we left off with looking at conversion of an act, carboxylic acid to acid chloride uh, using thionyl chloride. Uh, we were just beginning the mechanism, and I redid that here. Um, I want to go back and show something uh, about the uh, acyl substitution mechanism. Uh, back to one of the previous handouts, the written part. Uh, let's see if there's some room to write it here. Nucleophile is going to attack carbonyl. Okay, nucleophilic addition to carbonyl. I want to add something into this handout here. A lot of times we will first Protonate the carbonyl with, with strong acid. Protonate the carbonyl with strong acid. We'll do that a good bit under acidic conditions. going to make the carbonyl more reactive. Why? Because the oxygen now is positive and it's like pulls even more here. But the oxygen wants electrons now. So it pulls even more. And we can actually draw a resonance structure. I'll try to draw it down here so I don't go too far. We just move these up, but the oxygen wants them. The oxygen wants electrons now. And we can really show a positive on this carbon, and that's why a nucleophile will attack that carbon. So protonating the carbonyl is something we'll do a good bit to enhance the electrophilic nature of the carbonyl. It's just a general thing. We'll see that test three and test four. Okay. Uh, what happened here? Uh, right there, lone pairs. Okay, we got to this point here. I think that's where we ended up with that. Ah, uh, let's see. Right here. We'll say this a good bit. I think we've already said it before. Anytime you can make a pi bond with a lone pair, it's going to be easy to do and kick off the leaving group. Can we re remake pi bond? What do you want to kick off here? Chlorine. Actually, chlorine will get kicked off. That's going to give reform pi bond plus Cl minus. We got a charge down here. Okay. We sort of have some charge here, charge here. We can get to that point. Now, this is upside down, but what is a C double bond O carbon? Carbonyl. That's a protonated carbonyl. Just like what we showed over there. At this point, what are we trying to achieve here? We want to get a one on this carbon instead of the oxygen. Chlorine. Chlorine. These electrons will then attack the carbon. What do you want to do here? Keep the oxygen off or break the pi bond? Break the pi bond. See, this oxygen wants electrons. That carbon is electrophilic. We can push the electrons onto the oxygen and we get a chlorine adding to the protonated carbonyl. Uh, this is going to give, we got 
OH, chlorine now bonded there, oxygen, we get to this point here. This is nucleophilic addition to a propanated carbonyl. What are the two steps of our acyl substitution? Addition, elimination. But the addition may be to a protonated carbonyl. After the nucleophilic addition takes place, what do you call your intermediate? Tetrahedral intermediate, okay? See, the carbon is now tetrahedral. All right? Now, what do we need to do here to get our final product? We need to form carbonyl, but we need to kick that off. Okay? Well, we said this already today. Anytime you can use a lone pair and make pi bond and kick off a leaving group, that's easy to do. Now, you could argue, which is a better leaving group, CL or the oxygen? Well, you know, sometimes it could depend. If we kicked off the chlorine, what would we get? We'd be going backwards, right? So to get to this, we have to kick off what? We have to kick that off. And if we do that, we get R. Then we have double bond O. There's still an H there. That's now a plus charge. And we have a chlorine. Plus what? The leaving group, which was this here. That's actually a very good leaving group for oxygen. Why? It's resonance stabilized. We can do resonance structure. Okay, it's got a lot of good drawing. What do we need to do to get final products? Well, first of all, I gave you this. SO2 and HCl are formed. How do we make SO2? I think this is the third time I've said this today. Anytime you can use a lone pair to make pi bond, kick off leaving groups, easy to do, right? What does that give? Okay. Now there is a lone pair on sulfur the whole way through here. There's a lone pair the whole way. Plus what? <coughs> CL minus. Okay, how are we going to make HCl? Take the H from the Take here, leave these behind. What do we get? We get the final product. So when you take the H off, you now have your acid chloride, SO2, HCl. Okay, it's a number of steps, but they're all very basic. Question. <coughs> This is technically, so is this an inner conversion of the acid derivative? We're going from a carboxylic acid to an acid chloride, which is an acid derivative. Okay. So in the, in the other packet, you say that you can't go from something that's less reactive to more reactive, like an acid chloride is the highest in terms of reactivity. So how can we convert from the O group or the uh, carboxylic to the acid chloride? Okay, good question. Uh, first off, just uh, let's look back at the very first. This, this big guy here. The question is, how can we convert from an acid to an acid chloride? Is not the acid less reactive? Or you can also say, isn't the acid chloride the most reactive? When we're talking about derivatives, I'm mainly talking about the four in the box here. Okay. Acid chloride, and hydride, ester, and it. Carboxylic acids are outside of the box here. Carboxylic acid is not an acid derivative, it's the acid itself. Um, and you can actually, as you see up here, you can convert the acid directly to three different things. Three different arrows. Okay. Um, so the box, reactivity of the ones in the box, that was what that was kind of referring to. Okay, I asked you to put reagents here for each arrow. So what reagent do you want to put on this arrow here? Carboxylic acid to acid chloride. That's yes. yes. CO2, dino chloride. There you go. Uh, 
Uh, typically, it requires heat. Uh, perhaps not, but usually you keep the reaction. Now, the reaction also may be, Nick, a little bit of equilibrium. Um, <laughs> um, right here, you might say, well, maybe chlorine's a better leaving group. Let's kick off the chlorine. Uh, you're just going backwards, okay? In fact, maybe 99% of the time it does kick off chlorine. But 1%, 1% it kicks off the oxygen. You come here, and at this point, if you go backwards, you have this would have to attack. But see, this decomposes, and so your equilibrium continues on. When this breaks down, you can't go back. So that may be involved in why it pushes the head towards the product. Um, okay. So right there, we saw two very important general concepts. Anytime you make a pipe on, use a long pair, kicking off the leaving group, easy to do. And the idea of probating the carbonyl is going to make it more electrophilic. We'll see that a good bit, but only under acidic conditions. Okay. <coughs> what else can you do with carboxylic acids? I hope this is going to you can convert them to esters. How do you do that? There's actually two different ways. The first way will be a Fischer acidification. Fischer is the same spelling as your Fischer projections with a C. Occasionally I'll leave the C out in the handout when I'm not paying attention. I'm also used to spelling it without the C because Fisher, the chemical company, is spelled just without the C. Um, okay, you take a carboxylic acid, you treat it with alcohol and an H plus catalyst, you can get the ester plus water. Uh, if we start this oxygen here, it's now that oxygen there. Now, if we start, if we underline this oxygen here, which oxygen would it be here? <coughs> it could actually be either. During the mechanism, these two oxygens will become equivalent, and you can actually eliminate either. Okay? So you can't really do that. But that and that are going to be the same because the RO bond is never going to be broken. H plus catalyst, typically some strong acid required. Strong acid, okay? Sulfuric, like when we did elimination chemistry of alcohols, okay? H2SO4, phosphoric may be strong enough, HF, typically. You can actually also use HCl here, uh, HBr, etc. Okay, you take benzoic acid, treat with ethanol. You can use parathiamine sulfonic acid. Why would you want to use that? It's dry. Very good. <laughs> Why does that matter? You don't want to wet. You don't want to depreciate the alcohol. We'll answer that question. We can make this ester plus what? Plus water. That's generic. This is a specific example. We'll make water. Yes, this is a dry acid. Uh, in lab, it's just easier to weigh out a dry acid. It's not as corrosive. You don't get it all over pipettes. And you're, okay. You spill it, you just sweep it up, etc. But it will also be important because we're going to look at this here. This is an equilibrium, okay? Now, usually I don't show equilibrium arrows, but it is an equilibrium. We'll talk, have to talk about how to drive the equilibrium to the right. Okay. 
Third general point to make today about carbon hill chemistry. Anytime you're under acidic conditions, especially when you have a proton catalyst, first thing you're going to do is typically protonate something. Okay? It's H+. First thing we're going to do is protonate the carbon L. Just like I did at the very beginning on the right over there. Protonating the carbonyl makes the carbonyl actually even more electrophilic than a non-protonated carbonyl. Again, the option is now greedy. Like, I gotta have some electrons. It starts pulling on this to be more positive on this carbon. Now, nucleophile is the ethanol. These electrons we're gonna add to carbonyl, electrons up, what do we get? Nucleophilic condition is going to give O. What's on the O? There's an H and there's an ethyl. I'll draw it out. And a lone pair and a plus charge. <coughs> Nucleophilic addition of nucleophile to protonated carbonyl. Remember how I said the two H's become equivalent in the mechanism? See how they're equivalent right there? Yep. Okay. What do we need to do in here? We eventually need to eliminate one of the oxygens. At this point, one of these oxygens is eliminated to become water. Your choice. Which one do you want to eliminate? Let's eliminate the top one. Go to eliminate this one. Okay. Uh, let's go back to an old principle. How do you make oxygen better leaving group? Protonated. Protonated. What we're going to do right here is a H plus transfer. Have we ever done that before? A couple times. Yes. We're going, to pro we're going to transfer the acidic proton from this oxygen to that one. I'm not going to show any mechanistic arrows. Likely, whenever we do a proton transfer, it's two different molecules. The OH of one molecule takes that H, while the OH of this molecule takes the H from another molecule. <coughs> now, if we took the H off and showed three oxygens, which one would most likely have the H? There's no answer. They're all three equally basic. So why does this one get to keep the H? Why not put it on that one? Why not put it on that one? That H is bouncing around. It's in equilibrium on all oxygens. Okay? So I can show this one. Why? Because I want to eliminate this oxygen. And so now I'm set up to, um, I'll use this lone pair. Could use that one. Anytime you make a pi bond, kick off a leaving group, that's easy to do, right? That's the fourth or fifth time we said it. What does that give, Warren? Not quite yet. We reformed carbonyl. There's an H there, though. It gives that plus what? Plus water, which we said we're going to form. What do we have to do to get product at this point? Potassium anion can take the H, leave this behind, and that will give product, reform your catalyst. Or if you're a traditionalist, you can use water to take the H and make H3O plus and have this minus there. That's strictly correct because if you put tosyl acid in water, how does it exist? H3O plus, tosylate minus, just like if you put ACL in water.
Okay, this is a true equilibrium reaction. Every step up here is reversible. Let's reverse it. If you had this ester and the acid which is there, could you pregnate the ester and get to this point? Sure. So you can also come backwards. And if you pregnate the ester, could water add to the pregnated carbonyl to get this? Yes. And after water adds and you get this, could the proton be transferred to that oxygen? Yeah. And at this point, could you reform carbonyl and kick off ethanol to give this? Yeah. And could you then something take the H and go back to this? Yes. Every step up here is reversible. Probably the first ever that I've truly stressed that it's a reversible reaction. So, if you put one equivalent of all your reagents here and heated it up, it would come to equilibrium. It would be like one to one. You would have 50% here, 50% here. It's typically not good enough. How do you drive this to 100% to the right? How would you do it? How would you vary the equilibrium? Have very, very small low amounts of product so that it would be driven to the side that heat. You would do what to product? Have low amounts of, like, really low amounts of it. Okay, tell me practically how you would do this. Would you have to try to remove that gradually long reaction or gradually add more reactant to try to shut it to the right? Like the rest of the reaction is continually at reactant. Is that how you do it? Yeah. Or just like remove the product. Remove the product as it's formed? Yeah. Okay. Um, possibly. I don't know how you practically do that. It tends to, tend, uh, depends on the boiling points, maybe. What's another way you could drive it to the right? Other than removing the product as it's formed? Mm -hmm. Add more starting. Add more starting material? Yeah. Who's removing the water? Yeah. Let's come back to adding more starting material. Who said removing the water? Yeah. Yes, removing the water. Yeah. You can remove the product, but you can also remove the water. Remove the water, that'll make more go to the right. That's typically a little bit easier to do, removing the water. You can put in a drying agent, molecular sieves. Water has a boiling point of 100 degrees. Maybe you could boil out the water, do this at like 120, and as the water's formed, it boils out. Um, if you wanted to go to the right, would you add water to it? No. 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 So that's why maybe at using a dry acid helps this reaction. Would you rather use a dry acid or a wet acid? Dry. Dry. Because if you use a wet acid, that means you're also adding water. Water's not going to make this reaction go to the right as much. Aha! Uh -huh. Did we just say why well, a dry acid's better? Yeah, we did. Um, okay. Adding more starting material. Who said that? Rachel. How would adding more starting material help give you a higher yield of product? I mean, it's still 50-50 in the end, but... Um, yeah, adding more starting material doesn't help. I mean, if you start with 100, you'll end up with 50-50. So let's add more starting material. Let's change this to 200. Yeah, you're just going to... You're going to get 100-100. Yeah. So practically, it doesn't work out. I would put a great answer in Jenkins. But when we think more practically, you got to think a little deeper. Uh, yeah. That's just going to give you, hey, now we have more starting material. I mean, I could have used uh, 7,000. Well, then it would have been 3,000 and 3,000. Okay? This is the new 7,000. <laughs> so, you see how it does now? Uh, 
Most common ways to drive this is to remove water. Ah, it's so about any more of this. What other reagent can we have more of? The alcohol. The alcohol. Yes. This is commonly done using excess alcohol. Now you might say, well, shouldn't alcohol? Because you can only use an excess alcohol if the alcohol is easy to get rid of. <clears throat> because you will have excess alcohol there at the end. But if the excess alcohol is like methanol, well at the end of the reaction, you just put it on the rotavap and you remove the methanol. That's why in the Fischer esterification, usually your alcohols are small, like methanol, ethanol, etc. And you usually just dissolve your acid in a large amount of your al alcohol as solvent, add a drop of acid, or maybe a spatula tip of peritonium sulfonic acid, heat it up. A huge amount of alcohol will drive this all to the right, consuming this. You don't consume your alcohol, but you're not worried about that. Then in the reaction, you just remove the excess alcohol in the rotavap. So it's often for small esters like methyl ester or ethyl ester. You can't theoretically use any alcohol. Questions about Fischer's staircase? Did you say reverse? No, that's what I was fixing to say. What is the reverse reaction of Fischer's staircase? The deoxygenation. Essentially, well, it's actually not a deoxygenation because. When you come here to here, are you just removing the R group from that oxygen? No. no. This is a different oxygen. We don't break the OR bond in either way. So it's not exact to say deoxygenation. But when this comes over here, what does this react with? Water. And when water reacts something to give a new product, what do you call that? Hydrolysis. Hydrolysis. The reverse is hydrolysis. And we'll actually see that in another day or two. And when I show it to you, I'm not going to show you the mechanism. I'm going to tell you it's the reverse of Fischer esterification. Okay? But the reverse is to take an ester, react it with water and an acid catalyst, and hydrolyze back to the acid. In fact, all acid derivatives can be hydrolyzed back to the acid. If you look at the big box, everything in the box, if you treat them with aqueous acid, what do you get? The acid. You get back to the acid. So that's the reverse of the Fischer esterification. Ester is shown here. You take an ester, you treat it with aqueous acid, you get back to the carbonic acid. <coughs> Okay, another way to make an ester from an acid is something we saw in organic one. Treat this with base and then an alkylating agent. Some type of base to remove the H. What type of base you want to use? In butylamine. That'd be like killing a mosquito with a cannon. <laughs> <laughs> this might give me a more practical base. In butylithium is a little dangerous, expensive. I probably would not use it. Sodium hydroxide. There you go. <laughs> Something that's around in the lab, like about this big of a jar. Uh, okay. Let's use hydroxide. What other base could you use? Sodium bicarbonate. Remember bicarbonate deprotonates an acid? Okay. This takes the H, leave that behind. Something we did in organic one, make the carboxylate, acid base chemistry. That's actually equilibrium, right? Of course, this is uh, uh, four plus what? Water. This is 16. Which side's favored? 
we know which side's favorite. Okay, now we throw in a carbon with an electrophile. Good old carbon electrophile. What do we get? Good old SN2. And we can put the alpha group on our oxygen. And so that's another way to make an ester. O alkylation. There, if you start this oxygen, it's the same oxygen. We're making an O carbon bond. Where above, there was no O carbon bond made to the OR group of the ester. We did that exact reaction organic one. We just didn't kind of focus in on starting with acids and making esters. C. We can convert an acid to an acid and hydride. Hydride is, we've shown it I think, once before, it's an oxygen bonded to two carbonyls. We just R groups coming off those. We'll, we'll cover in hydrides uh, specifically in another day or two. <coughs> we can make this, this is also called a mixed anhydride because the R groups are different. There's a funnel over here and a methyl over there. We can get that by treating this with base. Let's use another base. Instead of hydroxide, instead of bicarbonate. How about an inorganic base? I'm sorry, not inorganic, but organic. What is that? Triethylamine. strong enough to make the carboxylate. Now if we throw in an acid chloride, this nucleophile will react with the acid chloride. These electrons will attack. At this point, what? I bond up. Addition. Nucleophilic addition to carbonyl. We're not under acidic conditions, so we didn't protonate the carbonyl first. At this point, what do you want to do? Back down, kick off the chlorine. What do we get? We got our product. Nucleophilic addition elimination. Overall, acyl substitution. Instead of a chlorine under my hand, we now have the nucleophile under my hand. They're, they're so acidic, you don't need such a strong base. With sodium, it's really redox. You don't need a bazooka or a cannon or a, or a whatever, whatever. A little milder base, bicarbonate, hydroxide, triphylamine, uh, should be fine. Technically, it would work. Anybody who knew what they were doing would look at you odd. Which um, one? Using sodium to form the uh, carboxylate from a carboxylic acid. See, alcohols are not as acidic, so you can't use hydroxide or triphenyl. You have to use like sodium or sodium or sodium hydride. Or even in lithium with an alcohol, that's still a little bit kind of strong. In lithium is usually used to form 
these turbulent protons that aren't that acidic. Okay, so that was the chemistry of carboxylic acids. We converted them to, we first we made them, uh, then we converted them to acid chlorides, we converted them to esters, we converted them to anhydrides. And that's about all you can convert them to directly. Okay? Now someone will say, well, you can convert an acid to an acid. But typically not directly. It's not in this class. Okay, let's look at chemistry of acid chlorides. First off, how do you synthesize them? Well, guess what? We've already done that today. You synthesize them from carboxylic acids by reacting them with what? I know chloride. So a lot of this is just cycling back on itself. Okay? We've already seen how to make them. Why is it not, why is it just acid chlorides and not like acid bromides and acid iodides? Because acid chlorides are reactive intermediates. They're never typically end products. And so, and acid chlorides will do everything you want. So why do you need to use acid bromides? So it's kind of like that. They're just so common, there's really no need to use the others. Uh, so acid chlorides are overwhelmingly the most common as opposed to bromides or iodides. Okay, what can you do with acid, acid chlorides? Well, a lot. They're very reactive. First thing we'll look at is reacting them with water or alcohols. You can react it with water, and there's no catalyst needed. Very electrophilic. We've already talked about that. Water will act as a nucleophile, and here, and we get electrons up here. Does that look like nucleophilic addition? Okay. Acid chlorides will react with water. What do you want to do next to get final product? Electrons down. Electrons down, down. Electrons down and kick off which leaving group? Chlorine. Chlorine. Which one's better? Cl minus leaving or water leaving? Cl minus. Water. Water. It's kind of iffy. Ah, what do you want to do? H -H that looks like a base, like hydroxide. Ah. This is like an acid. Proton transfer seems reasonable. Now your books will often not do this. But if we do a proton transfer, what does that give? Basically, this anion taking the H, maybe from another molecule. Now the OHs are equivalent. Well, let's stick with this one. Now, if we reform pi bond, which is a better leaving group, Cl minus or OH minus? Yeah. Now it's clear that the Cl minus is a better leaving group, and we can kick that off and get. We've got an H there, an OH here, plus Cl minus. Now how do we get the final products? Now these can take the H, leave that behind, and we get ACL. Overall, it's an ACL substitution with an addition, elimination. I've said this already. Very often with carbonyl chemistry, you have to take care of a proton. Deal with a proton. What are we dealing in this step right here? We're dealing with the proton, where it sits at. What are we doing? What are we dealing with in the very last step? We're dealing with the proton. So overall, it's an addition elimination, but it's got some proton steps in there we're having to deal with. Very often, go back to your Fischer esterification. 
We just, we just moved that proton around a couple of times. Very often, it's more than just your simple addition elimination. Okay, so I, what do you want to call it? It's reacting with water. What do you want to call that reaction? Hydrolysis. It's a hydrolysis. Anytime you hear hydrolysis, you, you really want to hear what? Hydrolysis. Hydro is water. Lysis means it's breaking or splitting something. What's it breaking? It's breaking the chlorine carbon bond. So you hydrolyze it. Okay. We react an acid chloride with alcohols. We don't get an acid, but we get a what? We get an ester. Now I'm going to use the same mechanism here instead of redrawing it. The only difference is we've got a methyl on the oxygen instead of two H's. Okay, so let's put a methyl here. Instead of two H's, it's an H and a methyl. Okay, you're not going to trans you're not going to transfer the methyl. Transfer the H there. What's left on the oxygen? Just a methyl. Just a methyl. And when we remove that H, what's left on the oxygen? Just a methyl. It's the same mechanism we just did with water, except the oxygen has a methyl, and you're never going to lose that methyl. It's there at the end, and since it's there at the end, it's a what? It's an ester. So you rack an acid chloride with an alcohol, heat it up for about five minutes, boom, you're going to have an ester plus what? Plus HCl. An acid. How would you know it was forming ACL? Litmus paper. Litmus paper. Somebody took their vitamins this morning. <laughs> that's a that's a hoggerism. <laughs> Doesn't hogger sometimes tell you it's about taking vitamins? Usually you don't even have to put the litmus paper in the reaction. You just hold it above the condenser and there's HCl coming out the condenser. Um, now, we used water up there. Of course, you could also use hydroxide. Okay? Or, or O minus. Basically, instead of using the neutral nucleophiles, like water or methanol, you could use the anions, hydroxide or alkoxide. Of course, these would work also. So you can hydrolyze the acid chloride to the acid with hydroxide. Let's do it real quick. Nucleophilic addition. At this point, there's no need to do a proton transfer because it's not going to, that'll just make this OH and this O minus. It'll be the same thing. But we can reform. Kick off the chlorine, what do we get? We get that plus what? CO minus. What happens next? Chlorine doesn't react with the test. No, the chlorine is Hydroxide then takes the H and we make 
that plus water. And this is in step one. This goes back to the knitting in the pool. We made an acidic product under basic conditions. How is the product going to exist under basic conditions? But it's in the basic form. You see hydroxide. You can't say, okay, hydroxide, I want you to only react here. Once the acidic product is formed, I don't want you to go react with it. Is it going to listen to you, Joseph? It won't listen to you. It'll ignore you. It will go react over here. You can't stop the acid-base reaction. Boom. So how many equivalents do you actually need of this? You actually need two. Now, if you want to get your neutral acid, what do you have to add? You got to add some type of uh, strong acid to put the H on. You got to dry your product. Another reaction of acid chlorides is with amines. Reaction of acid chloride with amine. The simplest of amines would be ammonia. Good nucleophile. Electrons add, electrons up. Electrons up to give minus. And three H's here, that's a plus charge. What do you want to do next? Overall, we've got to get the chlorine off and reform the pi bond. H plus transfer. You can do H plus transfer. Question is, is the chlorine CL minus a better leaving group or ammonia a better leaving group? Actually, a lot of books will just show you this coming down and kicking off chlorine. I'll do a proton transfer to give that there. Now we can bring this down and kick off the chlorine. Clearly, the chlor Cl minus is better leaving group than N minus. This would give carbonyl reformed. There's an H there, though, right? Plus charge and NH2. What do we need to do to get final product? Remove that H. Remove the H plus Cl minus. We can show the Cl minus taking the H, leaving the electrons behind. And we get the amide plus HCl. Nucleophilic addition elimination, but we did have a proton transfer step. Here though, HCl will create problems. What's the problem with the HCl? HCl is an acid. Ammonia is basic. You cannot say, hey ammonia, I want you to only react here. Once we start making HCl, I want you to ignore it. <coughs> Renisha, is, it, is the ammonia going to ignore the HCl or will it go react with it? It will go react with it. And you will make ammonium chloride. <coughs> Okay. How can we deal with this problem? Let's finish up here. One way is to use two equivalents of ammonia. That way one equivalent can react here, the other equivalent can go over here and do this and react with that one equivalent of ACL that's going to form. 
So you would use two equivalents. That's okay if your amine is cheap, like ammonite is. But what if your amine is very expensive? You would not want to do that. An alternative is to use another base, such as triethylamine or pyridine. And these bases would take the HCl. Please do the two reactions down below. We'll talk about why ammonia is cheap, but maybe other amines are not. Okay. Have a good week, guys. Uh, your uh, lab, the uh, your data table. I forgot the name we call it. Products, yields, etc. We will turn that in this week in lab.